Driving Strikers is a new Dreamcast game that just came out. It also came out on Windows and Linux. And it was also built up using the Simulant Engine. So you guys must be wondering, what is the Simulant Engine? The Simulant Engine is a modern gaming engine specifically designed to play games on a Dreamcast, Windows, Linux, and Mac. The game was made from two different people and was published by Reality Jump. And the first time too, in two decades, this will have a brand new online game for you guys to play. But it can only be played up to four players. It can also be played on locally as well. Even if you are on Steam, you can also play this game locally up to like four players. But I do want to mind you guys on Steam. The game can only work with a controller as it was specifically designed for it. Now, think of this game as if Rocket League came out in early 2000s or late 90s. Now, you, if you guys want to get the physical version of the game for the Dreamcast, you can do it by going to Wave Games website. It's the only website I know that has this, but if you guys want to get the digital version, you can, guys can get it on Steam, or if you want a digital version for, for the Dreamcast by wanted to get its ROM files and want to play the game on a burnt disc, you can also do that, which is quite cheaper than getting a physical copy of the original game. Well, it, you're still burning a disc, which is kind of physical, but you're burning on a disc. But yeah. There are, now, it doesn't matter what cover you get, it's region free. So, make sure you know your Dreamcast, because there are certain Dreamcasts Thrive her that doesn't allow you to play burnt discs on there. By the way, I want to make things clear, this game is not licensed by Sega or manufactured by them. The disc itself is in CD-ROMs and not GD. You also have to worry about storage capacity on Steam as well. It's like 500 megabytes, that's pretty much it. Now, there's not many modes featured in this one. They have Online, League Mode, which is kind of like Tournament Mode, and Quick Match which is one of the ways you can play local play. Now, for the stages, there's only about five stages, but there's one that's currently locked right now, so you have to find your own way to unlock it. You also got some teams to select. There's not much, but there is enough for you guys to figure out which teams you want. There's about, like, what, eight, ten? It's like around eight or ten teams. So you can select any team you want, all they are is just recolored cars of the same model, but it's not bad. I don't normally talk about the music and reviews, but this definitely does feel like an early 2000s vibe when listening to it. So, sometimes in the game the AI could be dumb, but what do you expect? It, I mean, some of the games I play can have dumb AI, but sometimes it can be smart. And unlike Rocket League, I've actually made my own goal. Well, you know. I also say that AI is kind of dumb at times because they almost accidentally scored on my goal. Which I was just like, what is this? But again, you gotta remember that this is a early 2000s vibe of a game. Controls are also quite simple too. You just move the analog stick to drive. If you want to go faster, you can either hold the right trigger or hold the B button. The A button is to jump. So, that's kind of all I'm going to say about that one. The game also has its own options as well. You can select the difficulty of what you want to play for a local play. And you can also change up like how many minutes you want in your game. Because the thing is... The game has like no quarters or periods or anything else like that. So meaning, when the time runs out, the game's over. And they actually show you who the winner is, with the car just standing in the center. And that's pretty much it. Sometimes too, the AI in the game can get really carried away with the ball. They can go way high up into the game, where it's like, you don't even know what's gonna happen. But the thing is, you can't really see where your character is either because the camera is mostly focused on the ball itself. The R stick isn't compatible with the game. Again, it's mainly because the Dreamcast lacks of an additional analog stick. Yeah, there's one analog stick, but there's no right stick or anything like that. So, meaning, 
that your only camera is just that. But for the Dreamcast, this does support widescreen and 480p under the VGA or any HDMI that you could configure on this system. Now I'll just say this too, it's definitely going to take a lot of practice and skill for you guys to be good at this game. Kind of like how Rocket League is. But like I said, this is more of a Rocket League game that came out in 2000, except it's only four players. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. So if you guys ever want to try to practice your skills in the game and try to outcome anyone that's in the game that's in your way, then go right ahead. So if you ever want to dust off that Dreamcast and play online yet again, you can. The only two ways to play online is either by modem or by broadband adapter, which broadband adapter isn't very common with the Dreamcast, so I would just stick with modem if I were you. And it's already pre-attached on the system, so what's the point? So all I can say is I hope you guys have a fun time playing this game, because I sure did. And I think there's something to love about this game, so hopefully once the Dreamcast game gets shipped, then maybe I'll dig into a game deeper. I'll see you guys then.